What's up gangsters? How about a little bit of a technique video? So one thing that I see a lot of guys ask about is when they're brand new to using photo etch is how to cut it. Now I know that may seem pretty basic to a lot of you guys but it's definitely a thing and there's a little bit of technique to it so let's get right into it. Okay so the first thing to recognize with photo etch is that it's not all the same. All right. There are different materials. I think when most of us think about photo etch, we sort of uh, assume brass. And it is, in fact, the most common. It's great for photo etch because it's pretty cheap, uh, comes in a variety of hardnesses, and it solders wonderfully. So brass is pretty much the standard stuff. But you may find other materials. You may find aluminum you may find stuff that looks kind of like aluminum uh, but is but feels soft like brass and it is it is in fact brass this is all brass even though it's silver but it's been nickel plated and you can see that maybe when you look right here on the edge of this fret where it's been trimmed off there see by my thumbnail there where it's you can see the brass tone. If you're if you're not sure, just run a file across it. Okay, you can see right there where it says Edward that I filed that off, and that that is shows that it's brass underneath. Um, and this stuff behaves the same way as this stuff. You can solder this. You can do everything with this that you can with this. Um, all right, but then sometimes you get some that is noticeably stiffer and harder okay because it's made out of something besides brass and in the case of this piece right here which is um, this is from the uh, uh, newest Tamiya 148 uh, Spitfire Mark 1 kit that is stainless steel and yep see it's magnetic you guys might not have realized that some stainless steels are magnetic, so that's probably like a 304 or 316. But it's definitely stiffer and harder, uh, as a lot of people have found out when they've tried to cut it or bend it. Then you get some stuff like this. These are from some 120th uh, seat uh, Formula One seat belts. These are the buckles and things. Um, and this stuff is not only thicker a bit, but it is extremely stiff and extremely hard. Pretty sure this is nickel silver. Oddly enough, in spite of the name, nickel silver is actually a brass alloy. But it is silver as opposed to being yellow like this brass. Um, nickel silver is great. It's used for all kinds of things like electrical contacts, uh, watch parts. Anything that needs to be really hard and, and springy and very durable. So, you know, in some ways it, 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 it's great for photo etch, but um, you, it, you know, you'll find that it's obviously a lot more difficult to cut. All right, so that being said, with these different materials, how do we handle them? All right, so, so look, cutting this stuff really should not be a major drama. It should be... Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, you know, uh, what a lot of people want to do is just use a blade, and there's nothing wrong with that. If I'm going to use a blade, I kind of like this type of blade because it lets me, uh, you know, just I, I just like the angle of it, just like the way it works. And what I really want to do is get right up next to. Uh, whatever it is that I'm going to cut off and I'm using an optimizer so I can make sure that I am exactly where I need to be and I'm, I think I'm going to wait and not cut any off of that because I'm actually using that photo edge for a project so I don't want to cut off something that I actually need sorry of course yep even the new workshop I'm still bumping into the camera like always anyway this I know I'm definitely not going to use all right so Part of how I avoid having a little nib is by just using 
an optivizer so that I can really see well where I'm making the cut. And just cutting as close to the part as possible. And you should be able to cut right up next to it flush uh, with a blade that's even reasonably sharp. Now, I screwed up, okay? I left, I ended up with a little bit of, uh, of a nib. And you can see it right there. And, and for me, that is a mistake. If I leave a nib like that, that I have to come back and, and deal with, then that's a mistake. That's an error on my part. That's just a result of bad technique because now I have to go find something that I can use to, uh, to, to, to sand that off. And obviously, that's never going to be easy. You're increasing your odds of screwing something up or losing the part. So you don't want to have to do that. But if I do have to do it, this is what I want to use. Is I just use a really, really fine grit sanding stick with uh, most of these materials. That's all that you really need. I see people talking about using like a, a diamond file and that's fine if that works for you, but you don't have to. And I really prefer something that is uh, a much finer grit than your typical diamond file because uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it just, it, it chatters less and Chattering is what causes things to go flying out of your fingers or your tweezers or whatever. But if you do have to grab it so that you can do some filing, these things are great. You know, again, as long as you don't deform the part in the process, but now that I've got it there, I've got, yep, and see, I'm bending it just because I'm trying to, to, to file that off even, even as, as gently as possible. So <laughs> I'm glad this happened because I really was not being as careful as I should have been. You can see exactly why I'm saying that, that it's, to me, it's a mistake if I leave a, 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 a nub that has to be dealt with because, again, it's just so easy to completely mangle that thing in the process of trying to clean it up. Now, I don't have to care because I'm not using that part for anything, but that's the basic way of cutting this stuff. What you don't want to do when you're cutting this stuff is cut on a soft surface, all right? Like this Exacto self-healing cutting mat is a perfect example because what will often happen is that instead of getting a nice clean cut, you'll actually end up sort of pushing the part into the cutting mat and deforming it and you'll end up with a nub or you know again something that you have to deal with in post processing and that's also part of the reason why I don't like to use this type of blade to cut photo etch and rather prefer to use these because even when these are dull they're still sharper than the average exacto knife blade so you can get away with cutting on a soft surface like this but it's really not the best practice now what i don't understand is people using glass all right we can all agree that uh, a hard surface is 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 important so that you don't do the deformation thing but it's just baffling to me uh, why, uh, and look, you can see here, you can see how mangled that part is there just from trying to cut it off. Anyway, that wouldn't have happened on a hard surface. But what's baffling to me is people using glass or any other kind of ceramic, like a, like a, a ceramic floor tile, for example. I mean, yeah, it obviously is super hard and you're not going to deform anything, but literally every time you touch your your sharp scalpel blade to a ceramic surface, 
you're ruining your blade. You're grinding it off. You're making it dull. And I just don't see why you'd want to do that when it's just completely unnecessary. And people say, well, but, you know, blades are cheap and I have to change my blades all the time anyway. Well, uh, you know, not really. Not if you use an actual cutting board material, okay? Like this. This is what I use. This is a small piece of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. I ordered this as just a four inch test or sample coupon from a plastic supplier. You can see it's just a quarter inch thick little coupon and they sent it to me for free. But you don't even have to go to that much trouble because if you've ever seen a one of those white cutting boards that you get at uh, your, your local supermarket, it's made of this material. You could also use a, hard, a hardwood cutting board bamboo, walnut, whatever, uh, you know, any little chunk of smooth hard wood like that would work just as well. You can also, if you've got one of these uh, Infini uh, cutting mats, cutting guides really, you could use the back of it. Same thing, it's nice and rigid, but not hard enough to trash your scalpel blades. If you don't have one of these laying around, Really, any piece of acrylic or uh, Lexan would work just fine. Same thing, hard enough to keep you from bending the, the uh, fret, but still not hard enough to destroy your knife blade. So, all that being said, there's also the option of just not even using a knife blade, which is one of my favorite ways because it gets you out of all of those problems. And that is to use these, all right? These are wonderful. I'm not a huge fan of Zuron in general. They're sprue cutters and my, you know, in my, in my view are junk, but these photo etch shears are wonderful. And these specifically are the 9180, all right? You can see right there, 9180. Now they make a 9180B, I believe, which <clears throat> is actually like a pair of uh, Kevlar uh, shears. They're about the same size, but they're made for something else entirely. Uh, so don't get those. But these things are wonderful. And uh, they basically uh, work like little tiny sheet metal shears, because that is that's really actually exactly what they are. And when you get into these types of uh, photo etch materials, you're not going to cut this stuff very effectively with a knife blade, at least not uh, you know, more than once. You're going to be changing your blade pretty much every single time with this stuff. So this is where these things come in because these will cut that stuff like butter. Now, here's what people run into though. There, believe it or not, there is a technique to using these things, okay? A couple of things to pay attention to, all right? One is when you look at the way that these shears are, okay, these are not super precise. Like you can even look, and this is part maybe, you know, because of the way they're manufactured. I mean, Zeron's not a precision tool company. You can see the tips are bent. That may be because I dropped them or because they came that way. I don't know. It doesn't really matter though, because the key with any shear is that it operates entirely on the stiffness and the tightness between the blades. And the point where that's the greatest is the closest to the pivot back here. So anytime you're using a sheet metal shear, you want to cut back towards the pivot like this and not up at the tip like this. Chances are you're going to get more deformation and less control if you try cutting by the tip. You may get away with it, but it's just not the right way to use them. So then the problem is, and this is what some people complain about with these, is, okay, well, but I can't get in there with the best part of the cutter, right? Obviously, you've got these two little parts. You're trying to get those out of there, uh, or this, you know, like this thing here. You're trying to get it out of there, and you can't do it without sticking the tip of the cutter in there. Yeah, I mean, that's a problem. So what you do is you just do the rough cut with the tip or 
you cut the whole section out and then come back and actually remove the individual part hopefully a little more elegantly than I'm doing it here but there you go point being is that once you have that section of the fret separated and especially if you're using your optivizer okay and I did mangle that but okay just ignore that <laughs> anyway keep it on the fret while you cut off all of the other nubs okay and get as close as you possibly can I mean you should be able to get right up next to it you can see that's a perfectly clean cut right there no no nib left for a secondary operation at all all right so now I'm gonna flip it around and cut the other side off and again having an optivizer is really essential okay so again just getting right in there and boom perfect cut okay that that piece of photo etch is ready to go without having to do any more operations that are going to even further mangle it but being able to see the cut is only part of the technique with these shears all right and to explain that i kind of need to scale it up so bear with me while i get some visual aids let's pretend that this piece of paper is a photo etch part on a fret and that these are my 9180 shears okay they basically work the same and just like with the real ones i want to cut as close to the pivot as possible but here's the thing okay if i just take all right, and, and the idea is that I want to cut this little round thing off. If I just come up here and do this, okay, because I'm looking at it from this direction. Now I've hidden the part from my line of sight with the blade of the cutter. Okay, see that? So for one thing, it's harder to see exactly where I need to place the blade before I squeeze them together to shear that part off. All right, plus there's also the fact that I might, that now this piece is gonna be loose, I'm gonna drop it and lose it. All right, so ideally, if I flip it around and I'm hanging on to the part itself and cutting off the fret, then I'm less likely to lose it and I'm gonna position my blade better. All right, and this kind of seems like common sense, but this is an important little subtlety of technique. And here's, here's another part of it okay it's not just visual all right if I just come in here like this okay I can see basically where the blade is gonna fall and make that cut across there and I'm probably gonna do pretty good at, at positioning it if I'm you know especially if I'm using an optivizer but there's also a component of that's tactile all right what I want to do is take this flat edge of the blade right here, the part that's going to do the shearing along the line that's important to me, and I want to and I want to butt it up against the side of the material so that physically it's in the right spot to make the cut. See what I'm see what I'm doing here? I'm butting that flat edge up against there so that it's automatically correctly positioned. Whereas if I have it flipped around this way, I can't really do that because see the back side of the shear is tapered. There's an angle there and it's not gonna nestle up against the part without moving it. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm holding onto this get the blade butted up against the edge of the part I can feel it make the cut chop right off and it's good to go and the same thing applies at smaller scale with these things because you can see the inside of the blade is flat the back side of the blade is angled 
All right, so again, just a subtlety of technique there. Do all of those things, and you should be able to make really perfect cuts with these shears all day long. And I know some guys will be like, well, yeah, but I, I build ships, and, and it's a whole different deal with ships, and yeah, and I look, I get it, you know. Uh, the photo etch on ships is an order orders of magnitude worse than any of this stuff but that's just in terms of the amount of it and this and the size of it it's still all the same the things that I'm telling you about cutting this stuff successfully is the same at every size and if you think that these shears cannot do a really really fine cut Look at what I did here, kind of by accident, when I was trimming that gate off. Okay, I wasn't using my Optivisor. I got a little too close, and look at that sliver that I left right there. That just, I sliced off the edge of that, of that strip. So, look, these things can cut every bit as close and as fine as you need to for any kind of photo etch. So there you go, a couple of different ways that you can tackle cutting off those pesky little bits of photo etch, and you can in fact make photo etch your friend. <laughs> it doesn't have to be intimidating, doesn't have to be hard, but you know, it does help if you have the right tools. And hopefully uh, this will give you some ideas about uh, what those are and how to use them. Alright, I hope this helped, and as always, I appreciate you watching. Much love.